Hi there, gorgeous. Today's video is all about false eyelashes. It's a very lengthy video, but it's also an all encompassing video. I get asked all the time about lashes, so many different questions. So I wanted to touch on every topic that I've been asked about. If you would like to reference this video in the future, or if you want to skip around, I will have all the topics that I'm covering here for you today with timestamps listed below in the description box. So please check there. I'll be talking about how to select the right lash for your eye shape, I'll give you an up close application tutorial with tips and tricks on how to make them stay, how to make them last, glue recommendations, removal, reusing them, taking care of them. Everything you ever wanted to know about false eyelashes will be here. Beginning with eye shapes. It's so important to select the right false eyelash for your unique eye shape. And I feel like that is one step that is often overlooked. If you select the wrong false eyelash for your eye shape, it can make your eyes look droopy, tired, it can pronounce fine lines and wrinkles. So it's best to really pay attention to your own unique eye shape when you're selecting a false eyelash for the most flattering look. And for the examples I'm showing you here, I will give you celebrity pictures so you can get a better idea of the eye shape I'm describing. Round eyes are very easy to spot usually. They have a visibly rounded shape and are circular in appearance. And the best lashes for this eye shape are those that fan upwards and have thin fibers. You want to stay away from lashes that are very full and dramatic because it can make the eyes appear smaller. So less is more when it comes to rounded eyes. Close set eyes are those that are narrower than one eye width apart. And the best false eyelash for this eye is one that fans out on the outer edges. It will help the eyes appear further apart and even out proportions. Hooded eyes, I get asked about this eye shape the most. So what are they and how do you know if you have them or not? Hooded eyes are characterized by a fold of skin that covers the socket line and it's usually attributed to either age or genetics. The best false eyelash for hooded eyes are those that have a lot of length in the center of the lash. Providing a lot of length there helps to dramatically open the eyes. Wide set eyes, similar to close set eyes, but instead of being narrow, they are wider than one eye width apart. And to help even out proportions, it's best to select a false eyelash that has a lot of length in the center of the lash, very similar to the hooded eyes that I just mentioned. Now, monolid eyes have the opposite effect of hooded eyes. Instead of having a visible fold over the socket line, a monolid is one continuous area of nothing but lid with no defined crease. And this is typically seen in Asian genetics. Genetics. Not all the time, but that's usually where you do see a mono lid. And the great thing about mono lids is that you can wear a variety of false eyelashes. It's really up to you to experiment with which ones will make the most of your unique eye shape. But I highly recommend looking to ones that have a lot of curl on the outer edges. For deep set eyes, these are eyes that are deeply set into the socket and have a small mobile lid. And once again, same with hooded eyes, you want to go with a false eyelash that has a lot of length in the middle of the lash to bring the eyes forward. And finally, almond shaped eyes. These are considered an average eye shape because a majority of the population has them. A majority of false eyelashes will work well for almond eye shapes, but especially those that are longer on the ends and have a lot of flare, typically tend to accentuate them beautifully. Now let's talk about glue because without glue, you don't have false eyelashes. And truth be told, if you select the wrong glue, you can actually end up hating false eyelashes. Been there. Duo is one of the most popular brands of eyelash adhesive out there. And typically it's the one that most people go for, but I found that even though it's a really great performing eyelash adhesive, I developed an allergy to it and I found out it's because it contains formaldehyde. They disguise it as formalin in the ingredient list. So I wanted to put that out there and make you aware. It made me a little squeamish to know that I was putting formaldehyde that close to my eyes every single day. And I know it's a very small amount because people have told me this in the past, but you have to wonder with prolonged exposure what you're actually doing to your body with that stuff. So I don't recommend the Duo brand lash adhesive. The one that I did find that does not contain formaldehyde and is latex free is the one from the Kiss brand. So I use their Kiss lash adhesive in clear and black. I love both of them. They apply easily. 
they hold the lashes on tight. They don't go anywhere, even through crying because, hmm, been there too. I also recommend the House of Lashes adhesive. This was one that I used for a little while. It's a little more gummy in consistency compared with the Kiss Lash Adhesive that I just mentioned. So that takes a little bit of getting used to, but the glue holds tight, removes easily from the band at the end of the day, and it is another excellent adhesive if you're looking for one that is latex free. There are two main materials I wanted to mention to you when it comes to false eyelashes, synthetic and human hair. And there are pros and cons to each, beginning with synthetic fibers. These are great because they're very robust. It's hard to destroy a synthetic lash. They can take a lot of abuse, and that's what's so great about them. With my lash line, Inky Minky Lashes, you can wear our synthetic lashes for upwards of 30 wears before they even start to fall apart. And I can't tell you how many times I've forgotten to take my lashes off at the end of the night, hopped in the shower, got my face wet, and oops, realized I was still wearing my lashes, but it was okay because they were synthetic fibers. And when you get these wet, they hold their shape and they stay in place. And that's what makes a synthetic fiber excellent. They can be a little harder to apply depending on the false eyelash that you select. Now with human hair, these are a little bit more delicate compared to synthetic fibers. They are a lot more natural looking on the eyes compared to synthetic, but they're not as robust as synthetic lashes either. If you hopped into the shower with a human hair lash on, it would be no different than your own hair. They lose their shape. It's pretty hard to use them after that, and you really only get about 10 wears, maybe 15 wears tops if you're really delicate with a pair of human hair eyelashes. So I wanted to mention these differences to you so you could pick a false eyelash that best suits your needs. Now that we have those bases covered, we'll hop into the tutorial and I'll show you up close how to apply false eyelashes step by step. For the demonstration portion today, I'm using a pair of lashes from my lash line, Inky Minky Lashes, and these are in the style White Lie. They are my favorites and one of our best sellers actually because they're so natural looking on the eyes. They suit a variety of eye shapes out there and they have a clear band. That brings me to the next point I wanted to talk about too, eyeliner, disguising the band. It's so important to disguise the band of your false eyelashes. Otherwise, people are going to know that you are wearing false eyelashes and that is what makes clear band lashes like our white lie pair so popular because they're easy to hide and you don't have to wear anything on the lash line. When you're wearing a false eyelash that has a thicker band, you do need to apply some kind of eyeliner on the upper lash line before you apply the false eyelash. And this is a perfect example. This is another one from Inky Minky Lashes. It's the style I do, another one of our top sellers. You can see it has a much thicker band than the white lie pair that I just showed you. And you can use any medium that you want when it comes to eyeliner, liquid, pencil, even eyeshadow. That's what I'm wearing today. Even though I'm using a clear band today, sometimes I like to have a little bit of something on the lash line there. And eyeshadow is a really great alternative, especially when you're wearing a lighter band on the eyes. There is a correct way to remove false eyelashes from the container. Sometimes if you're a little too rough, you could damage the lashes. Been there, done that. So the way that I do it is I take my finger, start on the outer edge of the lash, slowly pull down, and this takes it off of the container very easily without damaging the lashes because it's happened to me where I'll take the outer corner, lift it up, and then you can end up crinking the band, tearing out fibers, and yeah, it's not good to do it that way. Next step is to custom fit the lash to your eye. Most lashes will not come out of the package and fit you perfectly. If they do, then consider yourself lucky. You are one of the few that can do that because I have not found a lash yet that I have not had to custom fit to my eye. So the way that I do it is I'll put it right about there. No glue on it just yet. You simply want it to rest on the eye. And then you want to notate how much lash is coming off of the outer edge right there. And I like to take my fingernail and mark it like so. And I know for a fact with the white light pair that I only have to trim off one hair from the end. So I am taking off literally that much of the lash. And so I'll just trim it with a little pair of scissors I have here. 
Now, if you skipped this step entirely and you did not trim the lashes to fit your eyes, you can end up with droopy looking eyes. If you have too much lash coming down on the outer corner and it's not fit specifically to the shape of your eye, it can make your eyes look droopy or tired. So this is a very important step. And I know some people feel like it's wasteful to cut off that much lash off the end. And some lashes I have, I have to cut off a real good chunk of the lash and I always feel badly about doing it and it does feel a little wasteful. So I wanted to share a little trick with you that I do to use that piece of lash. So I have a sample pair here that I'm testing out for future addition to the Inky Minky lash line. And this one is definitely way too long for my eye shape. So it's going to need to have a lot come off on the outer corner and I'm going to be taking off a lot more than I would have with the previous lash. I'm taking off that much of this lash. So you can see that it does seem a little wasteful when you're cutting that much away. And the way that I do it is I take a little bit of eyelash adhesive, I'll apply it on this little chunk that I cut off, and then I will glue it to the outer corner of the lash. And I'm just going to show you here I haven't glued it, but I just wanted to show you what it does. It creates a thicker edge right there. So it gives you a flare on the outer edge, almost gives you a custom lash in a sense too. If that style is not flattering for your eye shape, there are other ways you can do it too. You can take this little chunk, cut it in half, and then take one of the halves, apply it up here towards the center, and then apply the other half on this side of the center. And that will give you a wide eye effect. It's great for hooded eyes like that or any other eye shape where you can't wear it on the outer corner. Before you apply false lashes, you want to curl your lashes and this will help them blend into the false eyelashes much better than if you did not do this step. And apply a mascara. I'm using one here from Rimmel Scandalize. This is their Curve Alert Mascara. I always recommend applying a mascara before your false eyelash application as opposed to after. The reason is, is because mascara can be troublesome to remove from false eyelashes and it can create a lot of buildup on the lashes. And again, mascara is being applied here to help your natural lashes blend in better with the falsies. And we're ready to apply the false eyelash. I'm using the Kiss Lash Adhesive here and applying a very small amount onto the band. You really don't need much glue. You basically want to lightly coat the band, but there should not be a thick deposit of glue. Very important step here. I always hold my lash in a U shape like this while I'm allowing the glue to set. You wanna let the glue set for 30 seconds. This will help the glue get tacky, it will adhere better to your eye, and it will last much longer. And by holding it in a U shape like this, you are also eliminating lift later. If you don't hold your lash like this while you're waiting for the glue to set, you can have it lifting off of the outer edges or the inner corners of the eyes. This basically helps to mold it to the natural curve of your eyelid much better. There are two ways you can apply a false eyelash. You can do it with your hands as I'll show you here, or you can use a pair of tweezers, which I'll show you next. And the way that I do it is I will come in and focus on getting the lash on the middle of the eye first. And then once I have the middle placed, I'll let go and place the outer edge and then place the inner corner. And you can feel the glue hit your skin. That's when you'll know that it has attached to your eye. And you do want to apply your lash right at the base of the lash line. You do not want to apply these on your own lashes because it can end up pulling out your own lashes later and that's no fun, let me tell you. And then you wanna let the glue dry at this point. Don't do anything until the glue is dry. I personally feel like I have greater control with my fingers as opposed to a pair of tweezers, but I'll use a pair of tweezers here so you can see how that application goes. This is a pair from Ardell. You can see that it's a very specialized shape specifically for applying false eyelashes. So you take the lash into the tweezer like so, and then you do the same thing that I did before, a little bit more 
there you go and it just goes on more lightly it is an easy application and then after you've placed the lash you want to do the same thing that I did on this eye over here and press it into the skin and once again you'll feel the glue hit your skin and that will let you know that it's on and then again I'll let the lash sit, let the glue fully dry. If you are a beginner, I do recommend getting a lash application tool like this one from Ardell. And it is important to get one that is made for false eyelashes because if you use a regular pair of tweezers, you can end up poking yourself on the eye and it's really not safe to use something like this. And you remember those little lash pieces I talked about when we were trimming the lashes to fit our eyes? Sometimes it's easier to apply them at this stage of the application once the lash is already on your eye. So you can see how it's going to look on your eye rather than attaching those little pieces to the lash before application. And I'll show you what I mean here. So as an example, I'll take a little piece that I trimmed from these lashes. I'll apply the smallest amount of glue. We're talking a very, very, very tiny amount here. Using those Ardell tweezers, you can apply it to the outer edge. You could apply it to the center. You could even apply it to the inner, depending on where you want the excess to go. I am going to apply one of these on the outer corner. You can do the same thing with individual flares that you find in stores too. Take those and randomly place them over your existing false eyelashes to give the lash more volume and create your own custom look. And now that the glue has fully dried on the eyes, this is the point where you want to blend your natural lashes into the false lashes. And the way that you do that is you take your lash curler with very minimal pressure. You don't need much pressure at all. Press your natural lashes into the false. And what this does is it eliminates gaps. It Thanks for cutting me off, camera. <laughs> like I was saying, this not only blends your natural lashes into the false eyelashes better, it will eliminate any gaps between the two. It also creates curl in the false eyelashes and it will open up your eyes more. Some false eyelashes out there can apply to the eyes in a straight way manner so they're not curled at all when you do apply them but the second that you use a technique like this with curling them into your own natural lashes it instantly curls those false lashes and false lashes take a curl very well and that's why i say minimal pressure is required if you apply too much pressure you can end up cranking the lashes and destroying the shape so very, very, very small amount. This is not a very good pair to show you the before and after because they have a lot of curl on their own. But typically, when you take time to curl your lashes afterwards, it does help to make a dramatic difference in the way the false eyelashes look on your eyes. And that is how I apply false eyelashes. Now, when you are taking your false eyelashes off at the end of the night, and I do recommend taking them off at the end of the day, every single day, I have known some people who get them on perfectly and then they proceed to wear them every single day for a week. Really not good to do that. Please do not sleep in your false eyelashes. Not only are you putting your eye at risk, it can also damage the skin around your eyes, which is very delicate, but you can also misshape your lashes. I have fallen asleep with eyelashes on before and woken up and they've been completely misshapen. And once that happens, it's really hard to get them back into their original shape. So I wanted to put that up front. Anyway, at the end of the day, when you're ready to remove your false eyelashes, you can either take them off gently with your finger, just pull them right off, or if you want something a little more gentle, you could take a Q-tip dipped in makeup remover and run it along the band a couple times. Just keep running it along the band, let the makeup remover do its work, and eventually the lash will lift off just as easily as you put it on. Just like you wash your face at night, it's also very important to clean your false eyelashes before you use them again. And this will eliminate eye infections, irritation, et cetera, et cetera. One of the best products that I discovered at the makeup show this past year is from a company called B Rad Cosmetics. They developed this natural eyelash adhesive remover and you simply take a little bit of this, put it on the band of the lash and the glue comes off instantly. This is a miracle product right here because if you've ever tried to remove eyelash adhesive from a band, Sometimes you can end up destroying the lash or pulling fibers out of the band. And if it's your first time wearing a lash and you spent a little bit more money on it than you should have, 
It's incredibly frustrating to ruin a lash after only wearing it one time. So this eyelash adhesive remover has become a godsend for me. And as mentioned in this video, I do have my own lash line because I am a lash lover. I am obsessed. And that's why I came out with my lash line inkyminkylashes.com. So if you'd like to check it out, I will have it listed for you below. We are adding a whole bunch of new synthetic styles in 2019, and I will have a video up on those, introducing them, showing you what they look like on the eyes, et cetera, et cetera. So if you are looking for some new stuff to try, please stay tuned. These, as an example, are some samples I'm testing out right now. They will be added in 2019 because they are just gorgeous, but anyway. I hope you found this video helpful if you've struggled with false eyelashes or if they are something that you would like to begin trying. And if I mentioned any products within the video, I will try to have them linked for you below. Again, if you'd like to reference this video in the future, save it to your favorites. I'll have a full breakdown from the video below for you that you can easily go back to and revisit at any point. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch and I look forward to seeing you again next time.